What's going on, everybody? It is Friday, April 6th. We've got a monster 10-game slate on the NBA tonight. I'm excited for it. For those of you that watched the live stream, you'll know that uh, I won the bet with Chris Baggs, so he needs to buy me a Chick-fil-A meal. I could not be happier. I'm going to savor that meal. I'd savor it more if it were a different fast food joint that was better, but alas, I'll take what I can get. Free food is always uh, something I'm interested in. Um, weird night last night. I was down quite a bit. Maybe not quite a bit. I don't know, 15%, whatever. Uh, feeling better about tonight. Like the slate a little bit more. Weird injury news, so let's just dive into it. First game up. Uh, Pistons hosting the Mavs. Uh, Pistons with a 106.5 implied total. They are 7.5 point favorites at home against Dallas. Um, Dallas, I assume everybody is going to be playing except for Berea, but who knows. Uh, for the Pistons, we've got Drummond at 10.5, 9,800 on DK. Um, Dallas has been good against centers this year. So it's not something that I'd want to go crazy for. Drummond with back-to-back 30-point -back, uh, nights, not the best. Um, I think there are better spots to pay up today. I don't see myself grabbing a ton of, of Andre Drummond. Uh, if I were looking at this team and sort of the way that I would want to go, I'd have some Reggie Jackson at 6,100 on FanDuel. Um, I think that's an okay price for him. Uh I'd be, I'd be fine having a little bit of Reggie Jackson in GPPs. Uh, other than that, like I'm not super wild about Stanley Johnson or Anthony Tolliver or Reggie Bullock. It, it's mostly just a little bit of Jackson for me and probably a, a little bit of, uh, of Andre Drummond. Not Just not a game that I'm like super wild about. Uh, a little bit of a pace down game for, um, for the Pistons, so... Look, like, who knows? Like, they could just roll Dallas. Uh, you know, Dallas is running out really interesting closing lineups. So, you know, the tank is on in full effect there. For the Mavs, um, I've got Barnes in. I've got Dwight Powell in. So things could change here if they do a little bit more of an aggressive tank. I have Dennis Smith in. Um, not a ton to like here. I'm expecting if everybody does play that they run, you know, 10, 11, 12 guys deep. Um, so I think that you can reasonably take a flyer on Harrison Barnes on FanDuel. I don't love it as much on DK. Price is a little bit higher. Um, I don't, like, I think that everything that's on here, you're just kind of forcing. Dennis Smith... You know, I guess at 6,300 on FanDuel is playable. I don't really see any Mavs on DraftKings as guys that you want to, like, actively target. And they're very untrustworthy. So unless we get news that people are out, I would feel much safer just completely staying away from the Mavs. Magic. 103.25 implied total is 13th. They are five-point underdogs at home against the Hornets. Um... Not the best matchup for the Magic. I'm expecting uh, Vooch to play. No Jonathan Isaac. Um, so if we're looking at Hazonia at 6,000, you know, went for 40 two nights ago. Um, I don't really mind the price. It's not, some again, not something that I want to seek out. It's not just this incredible value. He's just fine. I wouldn't disregard him if he popped up that's for sure uh aaron gordon at 7300 7400 on dk uh not something i'm gonna go and do backflips over really the only guy that i would want to look at with any sort of close eye would be shelvin mack um 5200 on fanduel 4600 on dk the 4600 on dk price looks really nice went for 29 in his last game uh, 33.6 in the game before that, both of which, you know, you'd be happy with at those price points. Makes for a, de a decent, you know, pay down guy. Um, I don't really want any part of Vooch on FanDuel. You can 
you can take a little bit of a look at him on DK, but I expect lesser minutes. And, you know, it's it's really hard to go at some of these tank teams, especially teams like Charlotte, who are, like, just generally well-coached. Even in a tank, they're going to be sort of a different kind of team. Um, so don't go crazy on Magic, guys. Uh relatively neutral game for them too so it's not as if there are any signs that make me want to grab a bunch of them hornets um kemba walker 7400 this is a guy that was significantly higher priced before um, obviously things have been a bit different last three games fantasy points 14 16 14 Whew, not good with that said, uh, I would happily have a little bit of Kemba at that price. Um, as long as he gets somewhere around 30 minutes, he's a, he has the opportunity to provide value uh, at that price point. 8100 on DK, he's priced where he should be. But 7400 is a little light. So unless we hear something about his minutes, I'll likely have a bit of Kemba because I see a bunch of upside uh, for him. Um... Malik Monk, 3,800 on FanDuel, is a guy that I would want to take a look at. Uh, he went for 28 and 27 in his last two games. He's $300 above minimum and should be seeing you know a decent allotment of minutes. Um, he's played 24 minutes in his last three games. It would surprise me if he played less than that, and I think that the opportunity to play more than that um, is probably there, uh, especially at this time of the year. So Monk would be my main focus, Kemba a little bit, and that's pretty much FanDuel only. Um, I don't really want to take a part of anything else here. Um, Orlando's been good against center, so unless Dwight's playing the, uh, the narrative card tonight in a meaningless game in April for two garbage teams... Um, I don't want to pay 8700 for for Dwight. It's not a horrible price, and he went for 50 uh, in his last game, but there's no telling. Like I see a lot of variance in that, and I, again, there's probably better spots. Man, this one's a bummer. I almost don't even want to talk about the game. 76ers hosting the Cavs. Uh, Sixers three and a half point favorites at home without Embiid, which is awesome. Um, it is kind of a bummer that Embiid isn't playing because this is a really meaningful game. As of right now, the Sixers and Cavs are projected to be tied in 538's projections. Um, and being able to get the three seed... I know this isn't DFS talk, but whatever. If It's basketball talk. Uh, being able to get the three seed in the East is gigantic now that Kyrie Irving has been ruled out. Um, for the playoffs to be able to avoid the Raptors in the second round is is monumental so both of these teams want this game desperately I would assume um, you'd be looking to avoid a healthy Raptors team significantly more than being able to play the Celtics so lots at stake here tonight would have been an amazing game if Embiid was playing still a great game you know either way but uh, there's a little bit of shine off of it um, without Joel. Uh, ben Simmons, 9,600 on FanDuel, 9,700 on DK. Uh, I'll actually have probably a little bit more than him, more of him than I normally would because I think that um, he could see an extra minute or two. We should see Saric back as well, which um, is helpful. But... I like Simmons more here than I, I generally do because I think Philly desperately wants this game and I think they'll commit to him and his creation uh, on the floor. Uh, Covington at 6,800 is a bit too expensive for me. Uh, not a direction that I'll probably be going. I don't really want much of Dario Saric either, even though he was uh, playing pretty well prior to going down for these last couple games. Ilya Sova at 5,200 on FanDuel, I think is very nice. I realize that he's been getting a couple extra minutes with Saric out, but playing really well, 5,200, uh, I think there's some upside in that number. 
Um, he's a he's a better play on FanDuel compared to DK, where he's a five hundred dollars more expensive. Um, and then I'll have little tiny bits of uh, Amir Johnson and Rashawn Holmes on the off chance that one of those guys goes crazy. Uh, probably slightly more Rashawn Holmes. Um, Amir on DK at 3,900, I think is worth a little bit of a peak. Went for 26 uh, two nights ago. So not the worst return in the world for a sub 4,000 salary. Obviously, Philly's got a really nice matchup here. Cleveland, not the best defensively. Uh, Small forward and power forward in particular both look great. Um, So keep an eye on Ilyasova. Keep an eye on Ben Simmons. Um, Little bits of the centers, but just watch the game because it should be fun. Like, this is what basketball fans should be looking for. Uh, Cavs, 110.25 implied total is fifth. As I said, three and a half point underdogs in Philly. Uh, very difficult matchup across the board. Um, most difficult matchup on the entire slate. If we look at Cleveland, a um, little bit of a pace up game for them, but that's about it. We've got LeBron at 11 4, uh, 11 5 on DK. I mean, I mean he's going to want this game as much as he can. Uh, I'll have a, a solid amount of LeBron, but I don't want to go too crazy. I'll try to stay relatively neutral to the field for him. Um, Philly's just so good defensively that I don't want to run run too much directly into that. Uh, Kevin Love, 7,600 and 7,500. Um, I'll have a little bit of him as well. I, I just like Love at this price point. Under 8,000 is, is nice in my opinion. Um other than that, I'm good. Uh, I expect George Hill to be back. So, you know, maybe a little flyer on Rodney Hood, but I won't have much of Hood or Hill, Green, Clarkson, any of those guys. And on DraftKings, they're they're priced up a little bit, so you really don't want much of Cleveland outside of LeBron or Kevin Love. <clears throat> Coffee slurp. Ah, that's so damn tasty. Washington Wizards hosting the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, Wizards with a 110.75 implied total, 12.5 point favorites at home. Uh, Third highest implied total. Not expecting to see John Wall here in the back-to-back, particularly against the Hawks. Um, Doesn't seem like a situation where they'll need him. And if that's the case, uh, Sadoransky, 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. I think he looks really good. Uh, Should be able to see... You know, the nice 30-plus minute allotment, at which point there's some upside in his number. Um, Got a cough. Uh, So, yeah, a a little bit of Sadoransky looks fine. Uh, I don't really want much of Beal, although on DK, 7,900 is not the worst price in the world. Um, 6,800 for Otto Porter on DK is something that I would take a look at as well, particularly if, uh, if Wall is out. There are little bits of value here for Washington, just mostly because uh, Atlanta's bad. So if you want to use Sadoransky, Beal, Porter, Morris, Oubre, um, I think they're all fine in like small to medium doses. Nothing stands out, but you know they all look perfectly reasonable. For the Hawks, God, I'm so sick of talking about these real trash teams that play lots of really trash dudes. Uh, Hawks with a 98.25 implied total, which is 19th. um, Second worst on the slate behind the Bulls. Schroeder out for the year. Ankle sprain. Uh, Isaiah Taylor, like, I'll have a little bit of him. Damian Lee, I'll have... Slightly more than a little bit of him, but at 5,300, it's getting to the point where I don't really want a ton. Um, I'll have a little bit of Deadmond at 5,500. Uh, I'll have a little bit of Collins. 5,400 for Collins on DraftKings looks really nice. Um, nobody go like I don't want to go wild about Atlanta because there you have a really piss poor implied total. Um, it's their implied total is four and a half points below their recent average. So, you know, they're getting a little bit of Washington's D as well. So muted, 
on Atlanta, they work as you know mid tier salary filler, and and I think that's basically it. Boston now, uh, Celtics ten point favorites at home against the Bulls, one hundred five point five implied total, which is eleventh. Um, they obviously have a nice matchup. Bulls really bad on defense. Uh, expecting to see Rozier here. Um, not a lot that I like. I, I just really don't like Boston's offense in general. Um, Rozier at 6,800 is, is okay for me on FanDuel. Marcus Morris at 5,700 is okay for me on FanDuel. Everybody's priced up on DK real dramatically. Like Jalen Brown, 5,300 on FanDuel. I'll take a look at all four, like the first four guys on FanDuel. I don't think they're as playable on DK, particularly guys like Marcus Morris, who's $1,100 more expensive. You don't ever see that. So, yeah, a little bit to Tatum, Morris, Rogier, and Brown. There's no one out there yet that, like, is really appealing, in my opinion. Um... I'd, if I were going to look at any of these guys, the, the guy that I would have the most of is probably Marcus Morris. Um, that That's about the extent of it all. I don't get the sense that uh, Boston's going to care too much about this one. They should sleepwalk through it. Bulls, 95.5 implied total, is 20th. Dead last. Uh, difficult matchup for Chicago. Um, oh, that was some really bad vocal fry. Uh, Chicago's implied total, eight points below their recent scoring average. Not a good spot. No one grades out well. Um, if I have more than, you know, two or three percent of any of these guys, I did something wrong. So not looking for any bulls. Unless we hear that, like, five guys are out. Um, I'm going to just avoid the bulls like the plague. <sighs> the Knicks. 100.75 implied total, 8.5 point underdogs at home against the Miami Heat. Um, Knicks 16th highest implied total. Beasley is questionable with an illness. Um, I would imagine he would want some uh, revenge narrative against the Heat. Well, you know, little bits to like here. I don't generally like getting guys against the Heat because I think they're pretty good defensively. Um... Nick's implied total is a little lower than it should be. You know, heat really limit uh, fantasy points per possession. So I think the Tim Hardaway at 6,000 is a guy I would look for because he has the ability to pop off in a GPP. I wouldn't really touch him in cash. Uh, Trey Burke, though, 6,200 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. Uh, went for 48 a couple nights ago, 62 even further back than that um should be getting a lot of minutes you know he's played 32 in his last game 38 before that if he gets up over 30 uh, i'm more than happy taking a flyer on trey burke at point guard um i don't think there's much to worry about there uh, i'll have a, a very 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 tiny amount of beasley if he plays um 6,900 is not my favorite price for Beasley, even though he went for 38, 41, and 42 in the last three games that he played. Um, I just, I'm, I'm just always nervous about Miami. And then Kylo Quinn, 6,800 on FanDuel. Uh, that looks okay to me. I have no problem playing him as a hyper-efficient guy. Uh, on DK at 5,700, where you can play more than one center, sign me up. Uh, O'Quinn looks like one of the better dollar-for-dollar -dollar plays on the board on DraftKings. So if you're looking for anybody on DK, uh, Kyle O'Quinn is, is one of the better plays you'll find. He'll pop up a lot on the optimizer when we run it, I'm sure. All righty. Heat, 109.25 implied total, which is sixth. Um, I'm expecting everyone tonight healthy. Uh, no reason to think otherwise right now, unless they're going to sit some more bodies. Um Knicks are oddly, like, okay-ish on D. Uh, but Heat have a 4.8 increase to their recent scoring average with their current implied total. Um, on a points-per-possession basis, Knicks have been 
the second worst, nope, third worst defense recently. Um, they just haven't given up a ton of like crazy big games individually. Seems like everybody just gets to eat. So um, no one leaves hungry, but uh, no one leaves with some excessive overeating. That's a fucking terrible analogy. <laughs> Look, it's Friday. It's been a long week. I've talked so much to my computer screen over this entire week. Baseball, basketball, live stream. Baseball, basketball, live stream. I'm just mentally don't have it in the brain anymore. Uh, if you want to grab anybody from the Heat, um, everybody sort of looks the same, in my opinion. Uh, I would look at James Johnson a little bit on both sides, 6,500 and 6,300. He'd be my first uh, guy that I would want a part of. I think Dwayne Wade, if he plays, looks kind of nice. Um, just kind of get that feeling that Wade would want to have a nice game uh, at MSG, 5,300 and 5,100. I'll have tiny bits of most of these guys. Josh Richardson, probably the only guy I won't have a lot of. I don't really like, you know, I've talked about this ad nauseum in this uh, show, but I don't really like getting Richardson much higher than 6,000, and he's uh, trending upwards again. Um, went for 47.8 two nights ago. Like, he does do that sort of stuff, but he has a lot of 26s and 29s, so. Little bits of uh, Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> Little bits of Dwayne Wade. Uh, you can talk me into a flyer on Whiteside on FanDuel, but I'll probably be pissed about it if I did it. You know, this could be the night where Whiteside goes for 60, though. So you, th those nights are always there. Uh, Crafters, 108.25 implied total is tied for seventh. They are seven and a half point favorites at home against the Pacers. Um, difficult matchup for point guards. Uh, which means Lowry at 7,500, 7,700 on DK. It's a little bit scary. Um, it's been a good matchup for shooting guards, though. DeRozan, 7,700 on FanDuel, 8,200 on DK. It's almost like I pasted the salaries incorrectly. There's so many higher salaries on DK. You just don't normally see that. Um, I like DeRozan here. I'll have a little bit of him. I like him a lot more than Lowry. I'll try to balance out that exposure, and I'd probably be like, I'm, I'm hoping somewhere in the two to one neighborhood for DeRozan to Lowry, um, but that's a hypothetical at nine in the morning. Um, other than that, you know, if you want like a, a deep cuts GPP guy on DK, you know, Pascal Siakam. If he gets the minutes, could be nice at 3,500, but that's like a, that's a, that's very much a GPP flyer type play. I don't really have anybody else that I really want to go nuts over here. It'll be just a little bit of DeRozan and a little bit less of Lowry. Um, Pacers. 100.75 implied total is 16th. Um... They have the most difficult defensive matchup behind the Knicks. Uh, Toronto just really good at limiting points per possession. Uh, it's a, an implied total down game for them, so it's, that's a little scary as well. Oladipo, uh, 9,500 on FanDuel, 8,700 on DK. Been picking up his rate of play lately. For me, I'm going to struggle to get to him at 9,500. That's a price point that I'm, I'm pretty wary about. Um recently Toronto has been the best team uh, at limiting shooting guards and small forwards and power forwards so I don't really want a ton here I think a flyer on Thad Young and a little bit more than a flyer on Miles Turner are my priorities um, so just a slight increase to focus on Young but Miles Turner 6100 on FanDuel 5800 on DK uh, Turner, for me, is a guy that I definitely want to have a decent amount of. That $6,100 price point on FanDuel is pretty nice. And um, Toronto isn't somebody that I'm super worried about uh, from a defensive standpoint at center. Like, obviously, Valanciunas can't hang with Turner um, defensively. So um, if Turner wants to assert himself here, I think he has that opportunity. I'm not, I don't even want to type this in. Memphis Grizzlies hosting the Sacramento Kings. 
And this is something, I need to check this because this is one of the more ridiculous things I've ever seen. Gee, I fucking typed it incorrectly. Oh my god. So, like two thirds of the Grizzlies are out. No Jamichael Green, no Andrew Harrison, no Gasol, no Wayne Selden, uh, no Evans, no Parsons. I feel like I'm missing someone else. No whatever. It doesn't matter. Here's the deal. They're missing everybody. Oh, yeah, no Mike Conley, but that one's obvious. Um, they're missing, like, a full starting rotation. And they're still three-point favorites over the Kings. I, I don't know what to make of this. Anything that I say here is going to be... They don't have... The highest salaried guy they have on FanDuel is $4,800. And that's Marshawn Brooks because he went fucking bananas two nights ago. I've never even seen something like this. So feel free. You're going to see a ton of value here. Ivan Robb, Ben McLemore, uh, Marshawn Brooks is going to be incredibly popular. Um, Deontay Davis. Like all of these guys have incredible value. You need to be aware of what you're doing. Um... It is an implied total increase game for them. It's a bit of a pace down. Look, I'm going to have bits of all of these guys because it allows you to fit in higher salaried people. Uh, Memphis is... Re like, this game is going to be a shit show. The amount of no-talent hacks that are going to be on the floor for 48 minutes is going to be staggering. These are, by f these, in my opinion, the two worst teams in basketball right now. Mostly because the Suns still have guys that are functional. Um, I, I don't know what to say about Ivan Robb, McLemore, Brooks, and Deontay Davis that I'd be like confident about. They're, f they're all fine. You can play them all. If they put up nothing, don't be surprised. You know, people are going to lay eggs in this game. Some people are going to go crazy. It could end up being Mike Henry's breakout. Who knows? Um, be prepared with what you're doing in this. Um, if you want to stack the Grizzlies, more power to you. Um, it could look great. It could look bad. This game is a it is an absolute coin flip. <sighs> Kings. 99.75 implied total is 17th. Three-point underdogs in Memphis, so feel good about that, Kings. Uh, Kings are going the other way. They're giving more minutes to the guys that they should be. Um, Bogdan up to 5,500 now. Uh, 5,400 on DK. I don't really like much of anything from the Kings, but most of these guys on the Kings, I would have expected to be better than all of this slop on the Grizzlies so while they're not grading out well uh it, I can't even say this look it's just they don't they don't have good pricing here um, they should get minutes though so if you want to take GPP flyers on Bogdan or Fox or Willie Colley Stein on DK or Buddy Heald or Scout like go for it but I will not have any of these guys more than one or two percent Suns, 104.75 implied total is 12th. They are 10.5 point underdogs at home against the Pels. Um, not the worst matchup in the world for them. Not expecting to see uh, Booker or Warren anymore. So Josh Jackson up to 8,000 on FanDuel. He's gone for 30 plus. You know, 35 plus in most of his games recently went for 44 on the third. Um, I'll have a little bit of Josh Jackson. I don't mind that at all. Dude's gunning. Um, I'll have a little bit of Tyler Ulis. 5,600 is probably a bit more expensive than I would like it to be, but he's getting the run. Uh, Daniel House, 4,200 on FanDuel, 3,900 on, on DK. Um, I'm fine having a bit of him. He's also getting run. I'll have some Marquise Chris at 5,500. Uh, Alex Len, if he plays, and he should, uh, 4,800 is an amazing price for him. 
Um, so I'm going to end up with a, a decent amount of suns, and much like the Grizzlies, I'll probably end up being unhappy about doing it. Best I can do. It's just it's a crapshoot with some of these teams. You know, you get into this, you try to figure out what's going on on a tanking team. You could look great. You could get burned. Pels, 115.25 implied total. First on the slate. Um, great matchup, obviously. The Suns are dog shit defensively. Uh, AD is $13,000 on FanDuel. <clears throat> 12000 on DK. With the amount of value that's out there, like you can get a bunch of AD. I understand why you would want to pay up for him. He should eat. Uh, lots of lunches against the Suns. Pels still need this game. Um, if we go back to the 538 projections, Pelicans 66% to make the playoffs. They're tied with the Wolves at 46 and 36 for a projected record. Uh, still one game ahead of the Nuggets projected record. So they're all jammed in here. You can't afford to slip up. So AD is going to go hard. Um, you know, it's hard to get to that 13,000 price point, but with that, all the value that's out there, no issues having AD. Um, no real issues having Drew Holiday either. Uh, 8,700 on FanDuel, 8,500 on DK. Willing to take a bite out of that matchup. Uh, but Rondo, 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK. No Ian Clark tonight, so I'd expect Rondo to get a, a nice full allotment. And um, he's just... I think that he's going to just shred uh, shred the Suns. So I'm going to end up having a, a very nice amount of uh, Rajon Rondo. Little bits of uh, Eton Moore are fine. I think a little bit of Miritich and his freshly shaven face are fine as well. Final game of the night, Lakers and Wolves. Uh, not a line out on this when I first started. I've got the Wolves as three-point favorites in LA. Um, 107.5 implied total in that case would be ninth for the Lakers. Um, I think this line looks pretty close to what we'll end up seeing. Uh, KCP, 6,300 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. No problem going there. He's going to play an absolute ton of minutes. Same for Kuzma, 6,700 on FanDuel is a no-brainer for the amount of minutes he's expected to play. Gotta have a lot of Kuzma if you're playing on FanDuel. Um, I'm fine with some Randall and Lopez, a little bit of Josh Hart. Not a big fan of Josh Hart on DK. Kuzma, Hart, Lopez, all priced up on DK, so they don't look as good. FanDuel, um, you can grab most of the Lakers and be pretty happy about it. Um, I like Kuzma. KCP a little bit more on DK, and uh, and Julius Randle a little bit more on DK. But, you know, grab those Lakers guys. They're playing tons of minutes. They're they're super thin, you know, not expecting to see Ball or Ingram or any of those guys. So lots of minutes out there to fill in. But Kuzma is the crown jewel, at least on FanDuel. And finally to the Wolves, uh, I think we see Jimmy Butler here for about 24 minutes. Um, 110.5 implied total would be fourth. Uh, very nice matchup for them. I like Wiggins a lot at 6,400. Um, I'll have a good amount of him. Very expensive on DK, 7,100. I'll have a bit less. Uh, Towns at 10,000 and 10,1 is a guy that I'll have a lot of. All that value is going to let you pay up to Towns and get a, you know, you can get Towns AD and have a bunch of value guys scattered around him, around them. Uh, or, you know, Braun if he needed to. Um, little bits of Taj and Jeff Teague I think are fine. Keep an eye on Teague, though. Uh, important to note his health moving into it. But for me, the top two guys are the guys that I would want. Uh, Andrew Wiggins at 6,400 on FanDuel and Towns at 10K. Whew. It is going to be an interesting one tonight, folks. That Grizzlies game is going to be... People are going to be freaking out. Let's upload these projections and see what we get. Alrighty. 
add some randomness in. Go. Whoop. Switch that to each. There we go. Yeah, lots of Marshawn Brooks. Well, lots of uh, Suns and Grizzlies guys. And then you see LeBron and AD and Towns popping up because you have that sort of money. So I think for me, I would want to get AD first and then Towns, and I'd probably just take whatever I get after that. So by default, we get Brooks, Ivan Robb, Daniel House. Um, let's grab Trey Burke, and then we can look through these seven. Um, I'd be cool with this. Rondo, Burke, Wiggins, and then the slop of House, Brooks, Brooks, AD, Robb, and uh, Towns. I'd love to get away from Dylan Brooks in this case. So if I were going to grab a different shooting guard, you know, maybe this one looks really nice. Kemba, Burke, Daniel House, Macklemore, Tatum, Brooks, AD, Rob, and Towns. That's a that's a very interesting GPP lineup. And holy shit, is there some trash in there? Now let's uh, check out the DK side of it where it's going to look dramatically different because of pricing. I don't know why there were already projections in there. Wait, what? Oh, I went to rewind. That's why there's projections in there. It's like, what the fuck? Okay, that makes way more sense now. All righty, DraftKings. What do you got for me today? Uh, for those of you that are still here, no live stream tonight. Um, I'm going to be off most of the weekend. Uh, I've got some uh, some friends in town, so uh, got to show them a good time. Um, so I won't be around all that much this weekend. This will be the end of it for me until Monday. Man, oh man, DK. not the most appealing group of guys so we'll grab brooks and house ad o'quinn who else is at the top over here deontay davis maybe LeBron? What comes after that? And then you start getting some, some wonky shit. You know what? For a GPP lineup, this last one looks kind of nice. Monk as a, a unique play. Brooks, James, O'Quinn, Deontay Davis, House, Rob, and AD. That's a fun GPP lineup. There's going to be a lot of weird looks tonight with all this value out there. So best of luck navigating those waters. That is it for me. If you like this video, please like and subscribe on YouTube. Follow me on Twitter at Josh Engelman. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to ask them in the comments or on Twitter or on Reddit still. Uh, you know, I'm still there. Um, and uh, best of luck tonight. Um, I'll see you guys uh, Monday morning. Bye-bye.